Hi, Pete Moore, editor of Shooting Sports Magazine. Welcome to Gunmark TV. And we have a new rifle from Savage. It's a semi-auto. So what's so exciting about a semi-auto sporting rifle compared to an AR-15 2.2 semi? Not a lot, but this is rather nice. I've been testing this. You've probably seen the review in the mag. And I've been using it quite a bit. <coughs> but it's the new Savage A22, A4 automatic. In the UK, the gun comes in 2.2 Magnum, WMR, and 2.2 Long Rifle, and I elected for a 2.2 Magnum for just a little bit of difference. I like 7 HMR, and I think it's more accurate than 2.2 Magnum. However, 2.2 Magnum carries more weight of bullet and more energy, so it's perhaps better for foxes, um, <clears throat> that sort of thing. But here it is. Um, plastic stock. Doesn't sound great, but it's not a bad stock. The barrel is fully floated. Which is quite nice on a on a on a, on a sort of factory two two semi auto. In two two magnum, which I do like, the barrel is twenty two inches long, so it gets the best out of the cartridge. In the two two long rifle version, it's sixteen inches long, which again is probably good length for two two LR in the UK. Savage have done a fair bit of work on this gun in terms of making it more user friendly. The thing I really like initially is the very large cocking handle. As you can see, it's a big rectangular plate. Lots to get hold of if you need to. Most 2.2 semis have a little tiny hook, which is a real pain to operate. Savage have also included their AccuTrigger, which is, this is the second, second mark. Um, and it's got a, a blade in the blade configuration. So you can't pull the trigger until you depress the inner blade like a Glock. And also you can adjust the trigger pull there's a hole in the back of the trigger guard, so you don't have to take the gun out of the stock, drop an Allen key and wind it, and it gives you a really nice break, and also you cannot set it too low. If it goes too low, it goes into a fail-safe position, which means you just reset the trigger. So there's no problem having a really light trigger that's dangerous. Control-wise, <clears throat> magazine well there, and you have a manual hole open button. The reason is, you have a manual hole open button because the gun runs on a 10 shot rotary magazine not dissimilar to the Ruger 1022 rotary magazine and this sort of magazine cannot mechanically allow a automatic last round hole open so it's not a big problem but when you finish firing banging away last round the bolt comes back and just shuts again just be aware of it but if you want to open the bolt there's a little catch under here you can see you just pull it back lift up the catch and the gun is locked, so you just put the mag in and drop it like that. The build is a little bit different. It's two screws that hold the, action, the barreled action in. The front screw comes up from the bottom, but the rear screw, which is under this plastic dust cover, comes down from the top. Um, and you have to take the dust cover off to get the bolt out, um, which, which usually means having to take the scope off because the dust cover has to come up and an angle to come out. So if you want to clean from the back, then you do have to sort of take the scope off, unless you've got incredibly high mounts. Um, I find something like this, as long as you keep it clean, a boar snake will take all the rubbish out of the gun. Um, Say, so I've been using a number of different sorts of ammo, but the two best ones I've come up with is the CCI Maxi Mag, which is a jacketed uh, or coated hollow point, and the Hornaday 30 grain VMAX, which is their latest high speed load. Um, accuracy wise I found that generally with the with the 40 grain load be it CCI Winchester or, or other weights you're getting approximately an inch out of it which is not too bad not quite as good as 17 but with the 30 grain Bmax you are getting three quarters of an inch without a real problem which does then make the gun a lot more interesting in terms of longer range accuracy average velocity on ammo like this is around about 2,000 feet per second and on this, it's about 2,250. So this will shoot flatter, hit harder. Um, Say so the rotary magazine, clip them in 10 shots. The magazine clips in. And I found with this thing, you need to put it in, you need to get a good slap on the base when you put it in, because sometimes it latches, or it think, you think it latches and it doesn't. But it's just a matter of getting used to it. Also comes fitted with two QDs, as ever. I've got a Harris bipod on the front one. Um, I was talking to Egger Brothers, Derek Egger, the MD, and he said that Boyd's gun stocks I will be offering at a later date a thumb hole laminate for it, which would be my choice. But as it is, it's a surprisingly good gun. So let's just put a few, few rounds through it. 
So the bag goes in, clicks in, that's your safety catch there, that's safe, it's fire. To get rid of the fire, just pull back and release, and you're ready to go. It's 10 rounds, mag comes out, push the catch up and it locks open. One of the things I have noticed with this, because it's semi-auto, the trigger resets as obviously as the bolt cycles, and you get a strange kickback feeling off the trigger. And obviously, good follow through on a rifle is you fire, you maintain your position, and once the shot's gone, then you relax. So, and if you don't do that, you get the kickback off the trigger and it can affect the shot, but it's, that's purely down to technique, nothing to do with the gun. But these are about roughly 500 pounds, I think average figure, uh, this is an early one that, that Edgar sent to me and it hasn't been threaded, but guns, be they 2-2 long rifle or 2-2 wind mag, will come threaded half by 20 for a moderator. Um, I'm more impressed with this than I thought I was, and it's made me rethink 2-2 magnum to a great degree. And I think if you're looking for something a little bit different, with good reasonable firepower and enough clout to properly kill a fox from a rimfire, this is not a bad gun to consider.